Hello, this is Hakkid Bean, and today we are going to be reading SCP-378, also known as The Brain Worm. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. Following the implementation of the Kraken Protocol on June 27, 1963, containment procedures or for SCP-378 have been updated. Personnel assigned to the SCP-378, a project, are to review its updated documentation as soon as possible. From Claudius Aldi, Director of RISA. Oh, RISA. I haven't heard that name in a short while. Item number, SCP-378. Object class, Thaumiel. That means it contains a different anomaly. Special Contained Procedures SCP-378 is to be contained in a subterranean and in the containment and in terrarium. Temperature and humidity are to be maintained at levels as optimal for or the growth and inhabitation of Heterodermia cancro, also known as Utica cave lichen and Prinolipus everettman, also known as North American cave ants. Twice per year, SCP-378 is to undergo a medical and physical examination. Access to SCP-378's containment and terrarium is separated from the surrounding facility by a decontamination chamber. Handling personnel are required to wear full body protection and must be screened for SCP-378-A prior to exiting the decam uh, decontamination. Infected personnel are to be terminated unless the position of SCP-378-1 to U3 is vacant, in which case they are to be assigned to the relevant position instead. As of the adoption of the Kraken Protocol, SCP-378's containment is focused on maintaining its three primary containment pr components. SCP-378-1 is housed in Area 19 Barracks. SCP-378-1 is employed as a maintenance technician with a Security clearance of OA-19. Upon the death of the current SCP-378-1, brain dead or comatose, re reserve personnel may be elected to replace it, as SCP-378-1 is the primary means of communication with SCP-378. Care must be maintained to keep SCP-378-1's vocal functions in working order. SCP-378-2 currently takes the form of David Lockhead a 36-year-old old Caucasian male and the employee of the American Supernatural Containment Initiative as a clerical aide. To maintain the continued operations of the SCP Foundation in the United States, SCP-378-2 has been tasked with sabotaging S ASCI operations against the Foundations, as well as collecting information in the Foundation's interests. SCP-378-2 is expected to follow strict health and exercise regimen due to the inherent difficulty in replacing it. SCP-3783 currently takes the form of Lisa Martin, a 33-year-old Mexican-American female employee at, spicy, at the Spicy Crust Pizza in Staten Island. In the event of SCP-3783's death, it must be replaced as soon as possible. Each component is fitted with a tracking device and an audio recorder. Each week, event agents say, are stationed nearby. Or each component and are to evaluate at the health and integrity of each component and its associated surveillance equipment. U the utilization of SCP 378A for their infiltration is pending Foundation Overwatch approval. I hope they don't get approved. You'll see, this is more about how awful the Foundation is and, and about how spooky the SCP might be. SCP-378 is an arthropod superficially resembling a deformed larval instance of Scolopendra gigantea, also known as the Amazonian giant centipede. SCP-378's legs are largely vestigial, probably meant to assist in aristotic locomotion. 
The SCP-378 measures 3 meters from mouth to anus with a body thickness of 1 meter and a weight of 233 kilograms. Under normal circumstances, SCP-378 is an omnivore with diet primarily of, a, of lichen and insects. SCP-378 is capable of asexual reproduction at will, producing instances of SCP-378-A from its anus. Instead of SCP-378-A, instances of SCP-378-A resemble adult Otskolopantra gigantea. Dissection suggests this resemblance is superficial as SCP-378-A lacks expected organ systems beyond a primitive neural network. Instances of SCP-378-A are controlled remotely by SCP-378. SCP-378-A are obligate endoparasites infecting advanced primates such as humans. Homognotus, that expunge, and gigant Antopithecus sapiens, common Sasquatch, aka SCP-1000. Upon infection, SCP-378-A integrates itself with the host nervous system through poorly understood means, inducing brain death and extending scp 378 78s remote control to the host itself. Vital functions and sensory input remain unaffected. Upon infecting a suitable host, SCP-378 will attempt to reintegrate its host into their respective species' social sphere. Once integrated, SCP-378 erects its host to indefinitely engage in behaviors typical for its species, such as communal labor and social recreation. Human hosts prefer environments with high population density and a robust and a robust us entertainment scene. The upper limit of, of active hosts SCP-378 can retain at any time is unknown. Upon initial interrogation, SCP-378 advances the existence of 26 human hosts as well as two instances of Alueta Apiga also known as the Guatemalan Black Howler, and three instances of SCP-1000. Research into SCP-378's apparent immunity to SCP-1000's anomalous effects is ongoing, of which I noted had been in, in, in acquired during a period of heavy intoxication. Addendum 178-294-B A Psychological Evaluation of SCP-378 Conducted by Dr. Simon Glass. Tentatively exited at Scolopendra Amolia, SV-378 is unique among autopods, possessing either human levels of sapience or the ability to emulate its host intellectual facilities. In any case, SV-378 is self-aware and remarkably intelligent. SCP-378's relationship to its host is complicated, while SCP-378 maintains a constant sense, a consistent sense of, of identity across multiple hosts. Each is treated as a persona for SCP-378 to roleplay. Hosts rarely interact with SCP-378 or fellow hosts, suggesting SCP-378 primarily utilizes its anomalous abilities for entertainment. This is further suggested by SCP-378's readiness to abandon such persona under the rest. Aside from integration into human social spheres, post behavior is largely unique to each instance. Actual version is relatively common. Hosts rarely isolate themselves except to sleep or as screwed. SCP-378 appears to take an equal enthusiasm in stressful versus pleasant situations. Of course, SCP-378 is particularly ideal attached to the identity of Lisa Martin, in contrast to other hosts. Lisa Martin's weekly routine is relatively static. From 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. all days except Saturday, Ms. Martin will show up to work at the nearest pizzeria from the former location of Digi in Nantos Pies, regardless of employment status or scheduled hours. From 6 p.m to 11 p.m. on all days except Saturday, Miss Barton will engage in the maintenance of one of 17 rooftop gardens <coughs> across the city of New York. Of these, 13 are maintained by a cooperative 
12 of which Miss Martin is not a part of. From 8 a.m. to 11 and p.m. on Saturdays, Miss Martin alternates between socializing with a collection of friends, co-workers, and lovers, and playing piano for various high-end bars. From 11 p.m. to 12 a.m., Miss Martin will shower and prepare for bed. Miss Martin will sleep from 12 a.m. to 7 a.m., but she will wake up and prepare for the next cycle. In the event of Miss Martin's death, SCP-378 will direct another host to assume her identity. Attempts to interrupt Miss Martin's routine have been in unilaterally met with unusual levels of hostility from SCP-378 and its hosts. I'm going to say this now because I think it's pretty evident from just Miss Martin alone, but SCP-378, as the author themselves has said, is ha as a form of, of autism, and uh, humans are their special interests. It looks like Miss Martin is uh, their favorite human. And yeah, for me, the, the, the schedule that doesn't change is very reminiscent of my own schedule. <sighs> We're just gonna. I'm just gonna let you know that um, this is a message from April 27, 1963. Director Fa uh, Einstein, Mr. Song, and Dr. Glass's work have revealed quite a bit about SCP-378. Most importantly, I do not believe it understands the significance of social dynamics, especially in regards to hierarchy and social capital. Several of SCP-378's identities held surprising positions of power. Indeed, two of them, David Lockhead and Alfonso Leos, are beyond the reach of the Foundation's current capacity to contain. Despite this, SCP-378 has shown a willingness to sacrifice such hosts in order to defend, replace, or otherwise maintain Lisa Martin. Odd, yes, but useful enough. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to Miss Martin and her friends, would it not? SCP-378 is sapient, but by, but by no means understands the significance of its actions. With a little bit of persuasion, David Lockhead might yet end from Petty Paper Pusher for the ASCI, Gravity Foundation, most things a puppet. And if I'm not mistaken, Spicy Crust Pizza could always do with a second franchise. See, this is a part where the Foundation gets me a little bit upset. They're manipulating someone to do their bidding. Disgusting. Proposal, employing SCP-378's anomalous abilities to defend Foundation operations in the United States. Council vote, vote summary. 0512 I mean 0513 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, and 13 are are for it. 2, 5, and 9 have uh, have enough of conscience to say no. And 0511 isn't unsure where to go with their indecision. Obviously, you can see that I put my opinion in on on where the uh, votes are. Status approved. Proposal accepted. Kraken protocol has been initiated. July 21st, 1965. So, good news and bad news, Director. Good news, and I'm sorry, as I'm assuming you already heard, with the plans for the construction of Site 56. Oh, thanks to uh, sorry, to Mr. Lockhead. The Kraken Protocol is getting a much needed expansion, with its relative air proximity to both the Lily of the Valley Nexus and the Pacific and Northwest. It's a perfect opportunity to expand the, the scope of SCP 1000's containment while ensuring the ASCI doesn't suck a lot to be dry before we get to it. 
For all its oddities, SCP-378 appears to be delighted at the prospect of a change in scenery. I can't imagine a tropical centipede grub likes having a sphere of influence limited to New England of, not, of all places. But that's besides the point. It, uh, it's A was complaining enough on the way here. Which leads me to the bad news. Rupert Tremont's a fun little guy, agent of the FBI's unofficial unusual instance unit. And all too stupid to trust Agent Wat Ryan's with his drink while he, he went to the restroom. After that, it's a matter of transport back to provisional Area 56 in Black Rock and a centipede down the gullet. Problem comes when SCP-378 tells us it can't establish a connection. Now, Tremette's still alive, so that's not normal. We run a number of tests to try to figure out what's wrong. And that's when we see a different centipede in his head, where our centipede usually goes. More to come, but I have a bad feeling about this. So, there's another mind-controlling thing, centipede. That got in the way of um, the foundations and uh, frankly, kind of nasty plan to use an anomaly in this way. Anyway. This was SCP-378, also known as the Brain Worm. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!